Hello YouTube. Today we're going to do a little experiment with a resonant circuit. I want to show you <clears throat> the effects different metals have on the resonance of a coil. Because I'm not sure if this topic was ever covered on YouTube, so as always I like to present new and different material that has never been done before. So we have our basic circuit here. We have an oscilloscope. We have an RF sweep generator which feeds a horizontal that syncs the horizontal of the scope to its output. Has an RF output, goes into a tuned circuit, uh, RF detector, and then back into the vertical of the oscilloscope. So yeah, this is the horizontal end, and this is the vertical end. And what this uh, what this setup does is it shows you the resonance curve of a tuned circuit. So right now you can see on the oscilloscope, I have a wave here. Uh, you can see that it's very narrow. We'll have the sweep, I have the sweep width turned really, really fast. I'm going to open it up here to show you the difference between the sweep width on the generator, how you control that. And then naturally the amplitude is how strong the signal is. And over here we got a bunch of different metals I'm going to try. Some are magnetic, some are not. We have aluminum, stainless steel, lead, brass, copper, and over here we have some magnetics. We have uh, an old cast iron nail, we have a masonry nail, a, steel, a common steel screw, and a piece of ferrite. So one at a time, I'm going to insert these uh, different metals into to the inside of this coil because it's a hollow coil. It's, it's an air wound, it's an air wound coil in the tube. You can see it there. And yeah, one at a time. I'm going to, like I said, insert these into the into the coil, and you can see how it's going to affect the resonance frequency of the coil. So first off. First off, we're going to try stainless steel, a stainless steel screw. And I have a magnet here. You can see it's not magnetic. Yeah, that is magnetic there. <laughs> yeah, no, no magnetism on this. So let me insert this into the coil and watch what happens to the resonance curve of the coil. Gee, it's like, where did my wave go? So let me turn the generator frequency up. It's way up here. See it? How, it, how it's moving as I'm moving it around. Let me increase the output a little bit. Yeah, so, so stainless steel changes the resonance to a higher frequency. So that one's done. Let's go back to where we were. Let's try a an aluminum tube. Here goes the aluminum into the coil. Again. Resonance frequency goes up as you insert the aluminum into the coil. And again, that's aluminum. That's not magnetic. Third up. Let's move this back down again. Third up. A piece of uh, solid wire lead for, for soldering. I think this is 6040 lead. So let's try the lead inside the coil. What does that do? Again, it changes the it changes the resonance frequency to make it go higher but as you notice it doesn't really change it a lot compared to the aluminum and the stainless steel but yeah it does still increase the resonance frequency of the coil so that's done lead next is a piece of brass a brass solid brass screw it's not magnetic we'll put that into the coil and brass also makes the Resonance frequency go higher. Copper wire. Let's put that in. Now you notice it doesn't affect it that much either. Look at that. There's not much of a change, but it does change it. And again, it goes higher. Because this is lower frequency down here, and upper frequency and higher frequency is this way. So that's how you read that. So that's copper. Now we got the magnetics. Here's an old, uh, these are old time uh, cast iron nails. Well, what will this do? Put that in the coil. Oof. It kills it. 
it, it looks to me like it changes it and makes it go a little higher, but it really kills the, the Q, as they call it. There's a formula called Q, or the quality of the circuit. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't alter the frequency that much, but it really kills the, the performance. And yeah, yeah, that is magnetic. Next up is a masonry nail. It's a hardened steel nail. Again, that makes the resonance frequency goes up, but it really kills the, the quality of the circuit. Take the output up here, you can see. How uh, the bandwidth really increases when the, when the Q goes down. Oof, horrible. And yes, that's magnetic too. <sighs> Common steel screw. Let's get, see what that does. Put that in the coil. Uh, you can see the resonance frequency goes up. As I remove it, resonance frequency goes back down. And yes, that's magnetic too. And finally, ferrite. This is a ferrite core, which uh, these is, this is very common used in like uh, ferret beads. Uh, uh, and they're also used as cores in, in adjustable coils. Watch what this does to the coil. The resonance frequency goes down. Let me insert it further. See how the resonance frequency keeps going down? I keep turning the generator down to show you. Yep. So yeah, there is uh, what ferrite does. Now let me tighten up the man width on this to, sh to show you the span of what ferrite does for tuning. So that ferrite's in. I'm going to pull the ferrite out. Watch the wave go up in frequency. See that? So that, that gives you a, a very wide range of tuning, tuning possibilities, like if you want to build a tuning circuit. Yeah, you can see the ferrite, how it uh, really changes the resonance coil. And yes, ferrite is magnetic. So, so I thought this was a pretty interesting experiment to do with all these different metals, to show you how they react with the coil, you know, between brass, steel, and everything else. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. Please subscribe and uh, we'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.